Hi guys, we're back. We are. Remind her, we're Alexa, back. not to slam your cup on your desk, you angry oh, bitch. Shut up. If you didn't make <laughs> me so mad, I would be fine. <laughs> Guys, I have to tell a quick story. So after one of our episodes, Alexa was like, did you hear that booming noise in the episode? Like, what was that? And we were, I think we were talking about spooky things that episode. And I was like, yeah, yeah we were. <laughs> we were talking about ghosts. I was like, yeah, that's you setting your cup down and it's rattling the mic. And y'all called me paranoid. I just have my paranoid moments on camera. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I messed up. And now I know. So. <laughs> so, um, okay. So as far as news goes, we did have someone send in a ghost story, but it is yes. long and it is written so well. So yeah. I'm going to save that for if we have time at the end, because I know you have a long story today. And yes. If we don't get to it, it'll be in next week's episode because it's worth reading like the full thing, like how he wrote oh, it. Oh, for it was sure. So good. Well, and like just to give a little context, he's like a journalist anyway. So yes. he, you know, he's a great writer. Um, yeah, it's like literally a story. It sounds yeah. so good. It's. I'll, I'll give you guys a little teaser. It's about some Ouija board action, mm -hmm. and oh, I was getting chills reading it. So I. I We'll get to it if we can. If not, it'll be next week. And so that's all the news I have. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't really have any news other than talking about how the trivia night was such a success. So yes. thank you to everyone who came and who showed. We are definitely going to be adding that to our resume. So we are interested in hosting trivia night in the future for those that are local to Missouri and Arkansas and I would even say like Oklahoma, Kansas, yeah. like just the bordering states that are drivable. What we call the four state area. So if you guys have an event or know of a bar or some yeah. suggestions, or if you own any of those places, then yeah. host us. We had, it was so much freaking fun. So we even got fun. the sports people to join. They were there for the game <laughs> and they said, nope, trivia, we're in. Yeah, we had people there for the hockey game and for the baseball game, and they're like, hell yeah, we want to play. So, yeah, it was yes. so fun. It was a blast. So, good job, guys, to everyone yep. who showed up, and good job to us. We crushed it. Oh, yeah, good job to us. Absolutely. <laughs> we did a great job. So, but that's all the news that I have. So, are we well, ready? Well, then... Let's just get, get started? into the murder. Yes. Okay. Um, what are you drinking? What is your something spiked? I am having red wine at 4.30 p.m. So this <laughs> is... And I have to work today. So yay, me. Yay. Um, so this is Han Cabernet. Just a cheap fave. Love it. Nice. This is a cheap rosé. I think it's like... Something St. Michelle or I, I don't even know, but it's just a cheaper rosé. So mm. we Cheers. are basic bitches today. Cheers. So I was thinking about the something spiked and I told Alexa the story we're going to do today. I I think I've heard, but I, I literally don't remember. Um, so but I want to do something like within the realm of psychology. So if I said like mind or mental or something like that, would that be good? Yeah, I say mental would be good. Okay, yeah. so mental, dental, sentimental, <laughs> anything that rhymes with mental. That's, that's oh what we're gosh. doing today. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, I think that'll be a great, I think that'll be a great word. So um, if you hear mental or anything around that, take a drink if you are 21 and older. And if you aren't, then suck on your baba, okay? <laughs> okay. Grab your binkies, grab your, <laughs> your, your milky milk. water. <laughs> Your little milkshake and drink a lot. We are bullies. <laughs> I know. Uh, so disclaimer, our videos and podcasts are for entertainment purposes. All information discussed was found on the internet. Keep in mind, we will talk all things sinister that may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. So 
We are kicking off the cancer season, uh, and we are kicking it off with a man named Charles Ray Hatcher, also known by Crazy Charlie. And let me tell you what, this man is crazy, crazy, crazy. Oh. I know, I know. So, uh, cancer season, he was born July 16th, 1929 in Mound City, Missouri. So, He's oh. a Missouri boy. Wow. Okay, yeah. Missouri. We're giving California a break. Love it. Well, not quite. But oh, shit. Um, <laughs> surprise. <laughs> uh, so Mound City, Missouri, it's a small little town just kind of north of St. Joseph. Um, it's literally on the Nebraska, Missouri, like state line. So all the way as north as possible, North Missouri. So just keep in mind, he's from a small city. I mean, St. Robert or St. Joseph is pretty big, but um, small Missouri city. I need to review geography because, okay, I'll just say it. I didn't know that Missouri bordered with Nebraska. So there it is. <laughs> I threw it out there. There it is. I am a dumbass. There I don't is. know anything. <laughs> I am man enough to admit that was my bad. So Hey, remember when you told me to like not slam my cup on the desk? Yeah, don't slam your hands on the desk. Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> well, well, okay. Well. <laughs> uh, anyway, so he confessed to killing six 16 people but was only convicted of two and we're going to talk a lot about that. But of course, kicking the cancer season off we got to start. So they are water signs. Uh, water signs we've talked about before with like Scorpios and stuff. Um, on a good day, a water sign can be very sensitive, highly intuitive, and caring. Uh, they are loyal and compassionate people. But on a bad day, they tend to take things too personally and are easily hurt. So mm. keep that in mind, you know, throughout this story that... He kind of takes everything personal. So continuing with, you know, the traits of a cancer, uh, uh, you know, cancer's best traits, again, go kind of hand in hand with the water trait. They are compassionate. Uh, they're goofy people. They're passionate. They're personable. Uh, tend to be like very outgoing people that have a lot of friends. Um, and they're sweet and caring. So again, it goes hand in hand with that compassionate side of a water sign. Um, they're bad traits. They are easily angered, so they snap easily. Uh, they're off. They're often agitated um, and extremely sensitive to the point where, again, they take everything personally. Mm -hmm. um, it said in one article, I don't remember. I think it was either like stupid like cosmopolitan or a lore or some magazine <laughs> it's um, the only place i get my news <laughs> <laughs> the only news yeah uh, but it did say that cancers whenever they snap they are brutal like they see red they can black out so i thought that was very very interesting especially with the story um it also said that cancers their negative trait they tend to be liars so uh, we'll kind of hear that in this story as well. Okay. I know so. a couple of cancers and obviously I, I don't know them, like know of them blacking out due to anger, but I do know them to be very like sentimental and like caring people. Yeah. Yeah. I know a lot of cancers that are caring and compassionate um, I guess I haven't seen the negative traits like that. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't uh, know if they're lying to me. I guess they could right. be. That's the point of lying. Right, right. Um, so car cancer serial killer traits, they can be possessive, moody, secretive, easy to snap when they feel threatened or pressured. Um, and they are tied for the top serial killer count in the Zodiac sign. So there are 46 serial killers that are cancers. Um, there are also 46 serial killers that are Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Pisces. So uh, I thought wow. that was very, very interesting. Okay. And Gemini yeah. is number one, right? No, they all tied for the top. Oh, oh gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So Gemini would be like next. 
But okay. the top is Cancer, Scorpio, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Wow. I know. Way to go, guys. Way to go. So, talking about his childhood, he was born to Jesse and Lula Hatcher. Um, Charles was the youngest of three boys. Um, Dad was a bootlegger, an alcoholic, and an ex-convict. And he was abusive to the boys and to mom. When uh, Charles was six years old, all of the boys were flying kites that they had made out of copper wire when his older brother got the kite stuck in a high voltage power line and it electrocuted him and he died. So this was a very, yeah, yeah. So this was a very, very, very traumatic situation, you know, not only for Charles because he witnessed it, but also for the family. And it was noted that, Um, His older brother was handing Charles the kite when Charles wasn't, like, paying attention, and it electrocuted his older brother. So it could have been Charles that died, and honestly, I hate to say it, but it probably should have been. Yikes. I was thinking, oh, no, this is going to lead to, like, a lightning strike and get electrocuted, but... No, no, no. Power line. Power line. Yeah, that's an intense kite. (laughs) Yeah, an intense kite and just, like, an intense way to die. Like, I can't even imagine, like, being electrocuted like that. Weren't you electrocuted once? (laughs) Yeah, I grabbed an electric fence one time. And I was trying to... I was trying to put my four-wheeler onto somebody else's property. And so I grabbed their fence that I thought was off to lift it to get my four-wheeler underneath it. (laughs) And my cousin, luckily I had told him, he was probably, like... I don't know, seven. I had told him to hop off Mm -hmm. and he was playing with this like pile of bricks and it was so intense. I thought I didn't know what had happened and I thought he hit me in the head with a brick. Oh, so I started like yelling at him. Yeah. You're like, what are you doing? What did you do to me? What the hell? And he's like, literally sitting there like, what? (laughs) Yeah. He's like, you literally got electrocuted by the fence. Yeah, it was fun. Wow. So that's what's wrong with you. It gives me my electrifying personality. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Um, So because this was a traumatic event for the entire family, mom and dad got a divorce. Um, Probably should have gotten a divorce anyway because he was an alcoholic and abusive, but um, got a divorce and mom remarried and dated many men. Uh, after this. Um, so fast forward to 1945, Charles is 16 years old um, and mom is on to her third husband at this time and they moved to St. Joseph, Missouri from Mound City, Missouri. So moved to St. Joseph, just a larger city um, for that third husband's job. Honestly, I'm still stuck on the kite. Was the kite made with copper wire or did yeah. it was like a makeshift kite? No, they, they, made? Made, they made it with copper wire. Okay. I didn't yeah. know if they like sold yeah. kites back then that were made of copper no, wire. No, they like, made at this a point, kite out of copper wire. We all wire. know Thomas yeah. Edison's story with the key and the kite. Like, wouldn't we have learned? But if it's makeshift, okay, we can move yeah, on. Yeah, it's makeshift. It's makeshift. Okay. <laughs> um, so, you know, although whenever he's 16, they moved to St. Joseph, Missouri, um, Again, his childhood, it was stated, you know, that he was abused as a child, not only by his dad, but by the other men in mom's life in the future. Um, It was also rumored that he was bullied in school, but he also bullied other kids. So he was getting abused as a child and he would go back to school and abuse other kids. Um, So the violence in his life started at a very, very young age. I mean, honestly, Mm -hmm. from birth. Um, I read a story that he did not have any head trauma that we know of, um, but he was severely beaten, e- even at the age of like a, to- a toddler. So, yeah, yeah. Could have had That's head so trauma. Sad. Yeah. So, uh, fast forward to two years later, he's 18 years old. And he got his first job at a bowling alley. Um, basically, he was just working in the pins and resetting the pins as they were knocked down. Um, didn't last long and got another job as a truck driver hauling like logs off of trees, you know, like whenever they cut up logs. So, he was hauling mm-hmm. these across the state. 
Um, this job only lasted a couple of weeks as well because uh, he stole one of the trucks whenever he was drunk uh, from the company. Uh, the company reported it stolen, saw him at a local bar, um, called the police, and the police came and arrested him. So this was his first actual um, conviction or first actual documented crime. And again, it was uh, auto theft. So, um, mm, okay. Yeah. So this is where How you old start. Was he? 18. 18. Okay. Wow. Yep. So this is where he starts getting in trouble and uh, kind of knew that the justice system was on his side and did not get sentenced to any prison time or any jail. Just got slapped with a probation charge and said not to do it again. Mm, always a good plan. Always give always. them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, I mean, he's only 18. It, it was his first time doing anything, but you're going to hear throughout the next, uh, we'll say 30 years, he gets a slap on the wrist almost every time. <sighs> I want to know, like, interview the people that gave him that opportunity. And listen, like, I think there are times where you can be lenient with people, but oh, in for sure. hindsight is 2020. And I just want to be like, so how did that work for you? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Um, the next year, he got caught, again, for auto theft, for stealing another vehicle. And this time, he was sentenced to two years at the Missouri State Penitentiary in Jefferson City, Missouri. So, speaking of, we need to go and do a ghost tour. But, oh, yes. Yeah. So, over the next 10 years, he is in and out of prison for petty crimes. Again, for theft, for forgery. Um, he also, throughout any time he was imprisoned, um, he would try to escape prison each time. But he was successful one time. Um, he escaped prison, but he was caught like five days later. So, it wasn't that successful. So, it kind of tells you, again, he is just a criminal. He is just a yeah. bad person. He's a bad person, and he's acting out. So, um, again, that's really over the next 10 years. Wow. I yeah. I want someone to put me in to – I've always – well, I have these dreams about escaping from, like, entrapment. Is yeah. that the word? Yeah. Um, I probably fucked it up, but um, <laughs> I, I – I, I don't want to do like an escape room, but I want someone to put me in like a real prison and see if I could do it. Oh, there's no way. There's no way. I'm not <sighs> saying because like you couldn't do it, but they're like the reason why people escape prison is or how like they have opportunity to work like outside or in the kitchen or, you know, stuff like that. So it gives them an easier way to like leave and escape the prison. Like, most of True. the time, they don't escape out of their cell. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> They're not, like, scratching at the walls for 10 or years. Or cutting like... a hole through the cement. Yeah. Like, it's not like that. <laughs> oh, okay. No, so it mind. has happened. But, I mean, for the most part, they get privileges to work in the yard or work outside or work in the kitchen where they're loading in food and stuff like that. So they get that opportunity, you know, to dart. Okay, well so. then let me re restate what I said. I want to be like a pirate in the colonial era thrown <laughs> into a stone and iron jail cell and see if I can okay. lure the dog over to give me the keys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there we go. Make it specific. <laughs> can go baby go to jail. You want a treat? All right. <laughs> Uh, so fast forward to June 26, 1959. At this time, he's 29 years old. Uh, he attempts to kidnap a 16-year-old boy. The 16-year-old boy is a local newspaper boy. Um, he went up to the boy, threatened him with a knife. The boy ended up getting away and notifying the police. And the police arrested Charles for this. Um, they also arrest him for stealing another car. So he clearly didn't learn his lesson the last... 10 years being in and out of jail. And this is when his crimes turned from like petty crime to violent crime. Gotcha. Um, so since he tried to kidnap uh, the 16 year old boy, he was sentenced to five years in prison. Um, although a couple months later in November, he tries to break out of prison, uh, did not succeed at this. And he tells the other inmates, that he is the most notorious criminal in Missouri since Jesse James. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, chill out. One, calm down. Calm down. You're it's gonna be okay. You're gonna escape in a few months, so like just chill right. out. But that just kind of like tells you, you know, like I guess just the type of person that he was. Like he was a criminal. Oh, for sure. He was clearly full of himself, which he shouldn't have been, but he thought he was some like badass Jesse James when his crimes are like nowhere near Jesse James level. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it's it's embarrassing for him. Oh yeah, so embarrassing. <laughs> um, so fast forward a couple of years, July second, nineteen sixty one. Uh, he's still in prison at the Missouri State Penitentiary. A twenty six year old inmate named Jerry Therrington was found raped and stabbed to death on the floor in the prison kitchen loading dock. So where they're loading in like, you know, the food and stuff. Uh, Charles at the time was working um, in the prison kitchen and the guards instantly knew that it was him because out of everyone that was working in the kitchen, he was the only one that was not there or not present at the time when they're like, where is everyone? Everyone come here. And he was like hiding. So they instantly knew that it was him. They sent him to solitary confinement. And I mean, he was in solitary confinement for a good year or so. Um, And while in solitary confinement, he sent a letter to the warden stating that he needed psychiatric help. Yes, this is when, yeah, <laughs> this is when all the mental shit happened. So this is, you know, kind of where all of that starts. One, I can't even imagine being confined to my house for a year, let alone a room. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying he didn't deserve it, but right, right. Ugh, that's but of that's, course he I think was crazy, so scary. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and of- you just brutally murdered a 16 year old inmate. Right, right. So. Uh, the warden read right through this and he was like, no, this guy is just full of shit. He's trying to get out of prison early by playing the mental illness card. Sippy, sippy. Sippy, sip. Um, so he then goes to court for the murder of Jerry. Um, and uh, unfortunately he was never charged with this murder. Because there was not enough evidence to prove that it was actually Charles who did it. Oh, oh what? <laughs> yeah, they couldn't. They couldn't state that he was the one who murdered him. That he was the one that stabbed him to death. That he was the one that raped him. So uh, they ended up releasing him August twenty fourth, nineteen sixty three. Man, if they if he would have just waited. 15 years or mm. 20 years, I guess, then we would yeah. have had DNA and this wouldn't have been an issue. But Oh, wouldn't have been an issue. Whatever. Yeah. Um, so after he was released from prison August 24th, 1963, somehow he made it out to California. I could not figure out why he went to California, who he went to California with, if he went to California with anyone. But somehow he made it, made his way out to California. Uh, hmm. Fast forward seven years, uh, in 1969, he is now 40 years old. So we are in the prime time of the California fucking serial killers. Just FYI. So he just took a break from crimes for seven years? Well, no. We don't know his exact like date. And I'm going to talk about some of the crimes that he committed here in a minute, but... Um, okay. We don't know the exact dates and times of when he did things. Um, and, and again, later in the episode, we're going to talk about how he confessed to 16 murders, but again, was only charged with two. Um, but we can only speculate that he murdered more people than we know of in California whenever he okay. was there. So right. 1969, prime time of all the other murderers and serial killers out in California because they're all fucked up. There must have been something in the water. Like, there had to have been something in the water out there. Or we did learn on the MKUltra episode that they were going through all that MKUltra stuff out in California, just saying, but something happened. Um... While in uh, California, at the age of 40, he confessed to kidnapping a boy from a small city or smaller city, Antioch, California. 
Uh, he said the boy was riding his bike when he told the boy, like, hey, come and take a ride with me. The boy did, got in the car. Um, Charles drove to a creek. Uh, and this is where he said that he strangled the boy with his hands and raped the boy. And obviously the boy died. Now, we oh, don't God. learn of this confession until later when he is finally um, arrested for the last time. And that's going to be in the 80s. So, oh my gosh. And yeah. haven't we talked about Antioch, California before with another serial? We might have. Like that's probably familiar. like Golden State or something because yeah. he kind of traveled all over the state or even Richard Ramirez. I mean, hell, like there's so many out there. Ugh, crazy. Yeah, so August 29th, um, 1969, same year, he's 40 years old, a six-year-old little Mexican boy from San Francisco, California, went missing. Um, this boy was last seen walking with a man who had offered him ice cream. Uh, the witness who saw this was the little boy's friend, and she was a six-year-old girl, so she ended up telling the police this. Um, the little boy uh, was being raped and beaten when a man walking his dog saw this and called the police. The police arrived in perfect time and they arrested Charles. However, at this time, Charles identified himself as Albert Ralph Price. So nowhere near his name. When the police searched Charles and was looking for, you know, like identification or whatever, they found an ID name or an ID on him with the name of Hobart Prater. So he gave the police a name, Albert Price, but the ID said Hobart Prater. So they're like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, what is yeah. your true name? So this is where he confesses and says, I steal identities. I steal, you know, whatever I can, like checking accounts, whatever. My name is Albert Price even though it was never validated for sure that his name was actually Albert Price. But it's important to note that that is what he goes by for for quite a while in this story. So, um, mm. yeah, it's just, it's crazy. It's so, like, it, it's so weird. And he's not even on, like, the Cancer Gemini, like, has, like, you would think that, not that like Gemini's have multiple personalities, but you know, we did kind of talk about how they have two different sides. He yes. is like two days to the end of cancer. So it, it's just, it's wild. Um, but the boy, the little boy did survive by the way, which is a great thing. Um, and Charles obviously went to jail, but again, he went to jail under the name of Albert Price, not under Charles Hatcher. Hmm. Yeah. So um, just about two weeks later, uh, September 12th, 1969, still going by the name of Albert Price, uh, he was brought before a judge for the charges of rape and assault against the six-year-old boy, uh, but was also brought before the judge to determine whether or not he was mentally competent enough to stand trial. Did something happen that made them do yes. that? Oh. Yes. Yes. So a so whenever he was in jail this time, he was like, I do not want to be in jail. I will do whatever I can to get out of jail. So this is when he started saying that he was crazy and that he had mm -hmm. voices in his head and he had bad thoughts constantly um, and that he said, I don't think he said he had multiple personality disorder, but continuing to say that he had voices in his head. Gotcha. So the judge was like, you know what? We are going to do a complete mental evaluation. Um, and a complete mental evaluation was done within a 90-day period at the California State Hospital. And primarily because he had asked the judge for this mental evaluation. And I know I said that like three times. But initially, the judge was like, no, you are competent enough to stand trial. However, this is when Charles, like, faked his mental illness and would turn into like a catatonic state like person. Like he would not speak when spoken to. Like they literally mm. thought something was wrong with him, but we know that it was all an act. Well, yeah, because this hasn't happened. I mean, they didn't know this because they're thinking he's a different person, but yeah, none of this happened with any of his other mm -mm. cases. And no. again, it is a common 
common misconception that oh, yeah. leading, you know, to insane. be insane, criminally yeah. insane or whatever the official term is, does not yeah. mean a lesser sentence or an easier time in prison. No, not at all. Not at all. But in his case, it absolutely did. And we're going to hear all about that. It is so freaking wild how this shit happened. Um, so he, again, was faking being insane to avoid prison time, uh, started talking at the hospital. So again, he wouldn't talk at the prison, but when he got to the hospital, he started talking and he was like, yeah, I hear voices in my head. The voices tell me to do bad things to boys. Um, he also pretended to be confused a lot and be in that catatonic state. And he faked a few suicide attempts by splitting his wrist. Oh, he faked a suicide faked attempt, so like multiple. he like made little marks or like cut the wrong direction. Yeah, cutting the wrong direction. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. So he did whatever he could to play that mental insane illness card. Got it. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so fast forward to the next year, December 1970, about a year and three months later. Uh, he was found competent to stand trial after this uh, evaluation. And it was only supposed to be a 90-day eval, but there were so many psychiatrists that were going back and forth. Like one would say he's passive-aggressive, has a passive-aggressive personality with sexual deviation and pedophilia, and, then, and that he wasn't competent to stand trial. But then another psychiatrist came back and said, no, like he's just faking it. So the judge kept ordering more mental evaluations because he's mm -hmm. like, there's something going on here. Why are they not agreeing? Yeah, and this isn't the best era for no. um, mental psychological yeah. evaluations. Yeah, yeah. I mean, better, better than I guess if you were being evaluated in like the 20s, but still but not still, great. Yeah, we're in the 70s. So one psychiatrist said uh, that he was insane and said he needs like vigorous treatment in a psychiatric secured hospital, like vigorous treatment. Another psychiatrist stated that he was even more criminally insane and that he was incompetent to stand trial. He said that he did not understand the crimes that were being charged against him. And again, the crimes that were being charged against him was the, the kidnapping of the six-year-old boy, the rape, and the obvious abuse, right? But mm -hmm. apparently he was acting as if he never did it. And so he was in this confused catatonic state. So another psychiatrist stated that he was not incompetent and the judge determined, however, he's like, nope, this is bullshit. He is competent. I am sending him to trial, and he will stand trial. So Good. this is when Albert Price, a.k.a. Charles, uh, pleads not guilty by reason of insanity. So more mental evaluations have to occur, and now at a completely different hospital. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, what shit? I was going to say something. Um, oh, the fact that he, there, when they say things like he's not um, aware of what he's being charged, but he was so yeah. desperate to not go to the jail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't seem to fit, but. Right. I'm no psychologist. Right. So it was then concluded that he could not stand trial. So this guy was a full on actor. So fast forward to, and this was like December, January, February. So fast forward to May, 1971, he was working with a prime psychiatrist, Dr. Carl Drake Jr. And of course these psychiatrists want to know about their childhood and stuff like that. Um, and this is when he lied. Charles had lied to the doctor about his childhood trauma, life history, um, and the reason why he lied is because, again, he's going by the name of Albert Price. So he doesn't want the doctor or anybody else to find out who he truly is because in his mind, he's getting out of this prison, right? And he's going to be a free man. So I guess this was before, like, the two-step identification because oh, how yeah. do these people not even understand that, one, he's not even who he – that's not even his name. 
Well, and in the 70s, I mean, you didn't even need, like, identification to fly in an airplane. You know, you yeah, just that's said, true. my name is John Doe, and I'm booking a ticket for John Doe. Okay, where's John Doe? I'm right here. Okay, it's your turn to board. Like, you didn't need identification for anything. Yeah. Weird. I know. So the next month, uh, June 2nd, again, we are still in 1971. Uh, he escaped from the hospital, um, but was caught a week later in Calusa, California, which is 90 minutes away from where he was at. And he was caught because he stole yet again another car. Um, and whenever he got arrested, he told the police officers that his name was Richard Lee Grady. Um, and he asked or stated that he was mentally insane and asked if he could go to the state hospital instead of the jail. Okay, I have to interject with the story because if I forget till the end, I'm going to hate myself. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but only okay. kind of. Okay. So, and when you said Richard, that was a sign that I had to tell the story. What? So, tell it. Speaking of really like crazy names, not that this guy had crazy names, but he's like changing his name. Yeah. Okay. There is a doctor in the Branson area <laughs> oh, with God. the name Richard Stiff. So think about it. Dick Stiff. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we make this story a million times better. He's yes. an OBGYN. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Are you so kidding? Was, I am not kidding. Someone oh told me that God. the other day at work, and I was like, this has got to be a joke. Like, it's got to be a joke. And everyone obviously calls him Dick Stiff, but he's an right. OBGYN. How funny okay. oh my Anyways, god that's funny we can move yeah. on now <laughs> no that's funny though like what in the world? <gasps> crazy oh yeah so um he was returned to the california state hospital um again going by the name of richard lee grady whenever he arrived at the california state hospital <laughs> the staff the hospital staff fucking recognized him they were like wait this Good. is Richard Lee Grady. This is Albert Price. Like, what the hell? So, uh, you know, because of his history and because he escaped and he, you know, was being crazy, they determined that he was putting staff and other patients in danger. Uh, so they sent him to the prison state hospital in Vacaville, California. So now this is like more of a secured building where he can't escape. Okay, but no one thought at this point, like, oh, this guy gave us a fake name. Maybe no. we should look at the first name that no. he gave us. We no. need to really determine who this guy is because no. he's going to jail on a fake yeah. name. No one thought mm -hmm. that. No one thought that. Nobody thought that. So and annoying. He, and we're going to learn that he doesn't even say his real name until, like, the 80s. So we are Great. only in... Great. 1971 now moving into 1972 that's annoying as fuck but oh okay. yeah yeah so august 1972 he's 43 years old um this is when he transfers to san quentin prison so everyone knows <laughs> yes. san quentin it's a maximum yep. security prison um and this is where he's finally forced to be included in the trial of the six-year-old boy competently so this is three years after the crime took place you know of the rape and the abduction of that six-year-old boy um wow months later december uh he was found competent to stand trial and competent when completing the crime because he tried to state that okay i'm competent to stand trial but i don't remember what i did or i was insane you know whenever i completed the crime but they ruled against him, and he was convicted of rape and kidnapping of the young boy. However, he was committed to the California State Hospital as a mentally disordered sex offender. So instead of being committed to San Quentin, which he should have been, he was committed back to the California State Hospital. How does that happen? How do you find being able to... Uh, yeah, how, 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 do you, how do you go that from one to the next? So I read a couple of different things. What I had gathered is that 
pedophilia at that time, like being a sex offender against children, was very rare in the early 70s, right? So, or if it was known, like if people were doing it, people weren't getting caught, right? And yeah. so when this took place, they're like, oh, he's just mentally disabled. Like there's something wrong with him, but he's competent to see him trial. Like he knows what he did. He knows what's going on. He knows what's going on with the trial. So we think he's just mentally disabled. Which hate to break it to you guys, but I will say this because mm -hmm. fuck your politics. Yeah. It is still uh fucking evil to yeah. look at children that way. It and is. it and is it's not, not it's not whatever love is love bullshit. No. Um, no. Fuck you guys. And yeah. anyone who stands by someone who's a pedophile, burn in hell. Okay. For Check real. It, it is not a, exactly. It is not a fucking mental disorder. You were not no. born that way. Like you are a sick, mo sick motherfucker. Like, yeah. It's not to say sick. that you don't have mental illness, but to say that pedophilia right. is something that like is genetic or hereditary. Or a mental or illness. No. Or, yeah. It's yeah. Fuck, fuck off. That makes me so know. fucking mad. Oh, Anyways. agreed. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, right? So, fast forward to the next year, March 28th, 1973. Uh, he tries to escape the mental hospital again. Um, so, around 5 p.m., the prison guards found him hiding in a cooler. Uh, and remember, he's still going by the like, name Like, are we of talking like a Yeti cooler or? No, like a, like a walking cooler. Um, Obviously. Yeah, yeah. I mean, knowing this guy, he would try to fit in a Yeti cooler. So, <laughs> not, wouldn't be surprised or wouldn't put it past him. Oh, God. Um, but remember, he's going by the name of Albert Price. Uh, he told the guards, yeah, I was trying to escape. And, um, again, the doctors were like, okay, we don't feel safe. We feel that he's a threat to the other inmates and to society. So we are going to send him to a medium security prison in Vacaville, California, with only a one-year prison sentence. So he was what just the fuck is happening. Wrong with I these was just people? I, I was just thinking in my head. Okay, so he's killed multiple people at this point. He has yeah. killed children. Yeah, he has raped and rape slash killed or combination of the two to yeah. several people yeah how is this guy getting i honestly at this point i don't care if they deem him mentally ill or not how right. is this guy like getting, getting free? out yeah i know <laughs> i don't understand it either i don't know like I, I truly don't know what they thought like he clearly is a pedophile he clearly is a criminal he clearly is a bad person like, why do you keep letting him out? And this is not the end of it at all. <laughs> and and he's, okay, and I know stolen identity, like, whatever, it's a crime. But, like, it's kind of a huge part of this case. Huge part of the case. Because they have not even, they're not even yeah. connecting the dots. How? I, because they I don't already know. caught him once. Yeah, yeah, they caught him once with a different name, Richard Lee Grady, when, oh, <laughs> this is Albert Price, but, oh, you really don't know his true name yet. I mean, at this point, I mean, social security cards did exist. Like, at least, like, hey, let's find your birth certificate or something, something on this guy. Yeah, I know. Huh. Okay, okay, okay. So two months later in May, he was interviewed by a psychologist who determined that he was a manipulative, institutionalized sociopath. Hmm. And this psychologist said that he knew that Charles would escape again. Again, they didn't know the name was Charles, so it went by Albert, but knew that he would escape again. So they're like, we need to move him to a maximum security prison where he can't get out. This is where he's like, nope, I am not going to maximum security. So what, what do I do to stay here? So I'm going to cut my wrists again. And he did. Um, so this is when he's treated for that. And another psychiatrist at this time determined that he was a paranoid schizophrenic and that it was too dangerous <sighs> to send him to a maximum security prison. So he stayed in Vacaville, California. Why? Why would that be a bad thing? Because he's going to try right. to kill himself again, right. fake kill himself right. again. Like right. he's already doing that here. Who cares? So like, 
this isn't working. Let's try another plan. But right, right. It's just so wild. So you can see like the impulsiveness in him and you know, just him being a liar and a fraud. It's like it's just and wild. a failure on the justice system as a whole. Yeah. Like yeah. a complete failure. Like yeah. I part of me wants to give the, the the psychologist or evaluators at the time a bit of a break because we are still talking about the 70s and this is before we had a lot of the technology that yeah. we did past 1984 but yeah. this is huge inexcusable yeah. this is yeah huge i'm so frustrated these are things you don't even need dna testing for or you don't no. need advancement in mental health these no. are things like let's use our brain he's lied about his age um mm -hmm. he has <laughs> fake attempted suicide like everybody many knows times him. like cutting like i understand that cutting is a form of like releasing your pain but if yeah. you are truly trying to commit suicide Kill yourself, yeah or fake it yeah it's yeah. not how you do it, no. and I'm just baffled that professionals, we're talking about professionals, aren't yeah. catching on to this. Yeah. yeah, and obviously there's two different ways to cut your wrist, and you can cut your wrist one way for eh, like... Don't say it. We're going to get demonetized if you say it on YouTube. Why? Because you don't want to show people how to do it. Just don't use the visual. Okay, well, there's Sorry. two ways to cut your wrist. <laughs> One way, we're not going to be monetized on YouTube ever anyway. But um, that's true. So I don't know why you're freaking out. But <laughs> there's two ways. One for attention and one's the legit way. And clearly people hadn't caught on that he yes. had already done this for attention many different times. I mean, all they had to do was look at his wrist to see the scars yeah. from the prior attempts. And they clearly did not do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of the same with like people who cut their legs or other parts of their body that aren't detrimental. It's like, I'm not saying you're doing yeah. it for attention. I understand there's a whole psychology behind it. That's yeah. a need to release the pain, but that's not a yeah. suicide attempt. Right. So, so for about a year, he was a good boy. Um, he worked at the, at the prison. He was being on great behavior um, he went to a parole board hearing. Um, they were talking about releasing him on December 25th, 1978. However, a California law was passed that basically counted all prior um, incarcerations towards prisoners' uh, stays or prisoner sentences. So any of his prior mental uh, institution hospitalizations were counted towards his sentence. So he was released a year and a half early on May 20th, 1977 on good behavior and was released to a halfway house in San Francisco. Oh, good. And of all places in California to be released to, mm -hmm. let's do it in San Francisco. Sorry, San Franciscans. You are the shithole of California. <laughs> Oh, it's like honestly anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's so oh, bad. I want to say worse than LA. Like San Francisco is pretty fucking bad. Yeah. They're, I mean, I would say they're both really bad, but 100%. Like, and this is Ugh. also where, keep in mind, he is incarcerated for kidnapping and raping a six year old boy from San Francisco. And they release him to San Francisco. Like, why? What? And in a halfway house, like we're, we're not even talking about a fully monitored facility. No, no. So, okay. So, good choices all around. Right. So five days later, he's already fucking up. Uh, he's supposed to be checking into the halfway house every night at 9 PM. Um, he's also, um, heavily medicated. So they have him on a lot of like psych psychiatric meds. That was part of his release, like, hey, you truly do have mental illnesses. You need to be medicated. Well, he doesn't show up. So this is only five days later after being released, and he is finally declared a parolee at large. So he's he's missing, and he's he's escaped. 
Yeah, and I feel like somebody who truly thought that they were sick in the head probably would have showed up so that they wouldn't be sick in the head, and their exactly. team would have made sure they would have showed up. Right. But instead, we bail. So what does that yeah. say? Probably right. not psychologically. Much. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying this guy didn't have problems. He clearly oh, had Oh, he problems, definitely but did, but he wasn't to the point of where they thought he was, like schizophrenic not. and all that bullshit. Not even. So. So, a year later, May 27th, 1978, he's 48 years old at this time, Uh, a young boy named Eric, he was four years old, um, was kidnapped and murdered in St. Joseph, Missouri. Um, So, he made him, Charles made himself back to uh, St. Joe, Missouri, Um, and the four-year-old boy was found dead um, by the Missouri River there in St. Joseph. Oh my God! Also, how is this guy traveling? Like, is he working? How is he getting? I, well, you know, one, he has to be like hitchhiking. Yeah, he would have to be hitchhiking at that time. That's what I would guess. Like, probably by like truck drivers. It did say, you know, he would always do like odd jobs or like the jobs that nobody else would want to do. Like, I read mm-hmm. something that like he cut out the, like he he used to cut tires or something like that, or he worked at the landfill or, you know, he would do like random jobs that nobody else would want. Um, yeah. So, but it, it didn't say how he made it back to Missouri and never said how he made it to California. So could have been hitchhiking. Who knows? Hmm. Um, so a couple months later, September 4th, Charles was arrested. Uh, he's now in Omaha, Nebraska, which again, it's not that far from St. Joe, but still, um, in Omaha, Nebraska for raping a 16 year old boy. The boy lived, so he didn't kill him, but he raped the boy. Um, and he was sent to Douglas County mental hospital, not a prison, a mental hospital again. This, I really, I mean, I hate that all of this happened, but I really hope this was just a case of it fell into inexperienced, wrong hands, and this isn't how they handle all of these cases. You know what I I mean? Right. I would hope not. But, like, at this time, it kind of tells you, like, the justice system, like, kind of lose faith. Um, When he checks into the mental hospital, he goes by the name of Richard Clark. So now we are on our third name. Uh, So he's going by the name of Richard Clark. Well, technically fourth, but, you know, third alias. Um, He's then released and arrested again the following year, the next May, for assaulting an attempted murder on another boy. And this boy was seven years old. The boy obviously lived because it was attempted murder, but uh, these charges were dropped against, against him. Um, however, he did get sentenced to going to another mental health hospital for a year. They said, okay, we will drop these charges as long as you go back to the hospital because you're clearly ill. What? And I cannot stress this enough. The fuck? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A year later, he is released from this hospital and returns two months later for another assault. So you can see the pattern here. He's he's committing these assaults. He's raping these people. He's attempting, you know, to murder them. He's kidnapping them. But then he goes back to these mental institutions and he's treated, but then he's released again. Like, why would they not just say, you know what, we're locking this motherfucker up. Like, he is clearly messed up. Like, we do not need to give him any freedom. But no, they kept releasing him. My question, too, is is when we say assault, we're talking about, like, sexual assault, like rape, right? Yeah, he would rape and assault them. So rape okay. and beat them. And, like, like, beat the fuck out of them. Yeah, like, See, try to that- murder them. Yeah. We're like, that is what gets me is like, we're not just talking like he got drunk and went and got in a bar fight. We're not saying he got into an altercation and beat no. the shit out of someone. We are talking about rape and battery, rape and. And against like, children for the most part. And like kids. People under the and age kids. of 18. Yeah. And children. So what yeah. is wrong with these people that they're like, well, he just, he just needs some. 
love and kindness in yeah, our some facility. Some TLC, some tender love and care. Ugh, some transformative learning center. Yeah, fucking A. I don't know. It's wild. So fast forward to June 20th, 1981. He's 51 years old at this time. Uh, he's out, out, out at the river with his friend named James Churchill. James is 34 years old. Um, they were drinking all day, and uh, Charles had this overwhelming feeling and urge to kill his friend. So he did. <laughs> sometimes, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I get that feeling with you. <laughs> <laughs> You're like... I, sometimes we're sitting at lunch having chips and queso, and I'm like, wow, you know, I could just murder her right now. <laughs> I, know, could just, I, will... <laughs> I could just strangle her. <laughs> like that is not a normal you know no this has been great sitting by the river having some beer but i'm getting the overwhelming urge to fuck your ass up like yeah what? yeah so he did like he legit stabbed his friend james 12 times and the knife got stuck in james's <gasps> chest yeah, and he couldn't get it out. So, like, obviously, like, stuck in a rib or clavicle or something. Or in shit. his sternum. sternum. Like, in be- yeah. Oh. Yeah. And uh, the guy died. Well, honestly, Clearly. after that, I would hope. Because yeah. would you want to survive that? No. 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 Oh, my God. Yeah. So, the mm. following month, July 16th, uh, he was arrested for another attempting to kidnap another boy. Uh, this boy was an 11 year old boy, um, and he was at a grocery store now in Iowa, so in Bettendorf, Iowa. Uh, the boy quickly ran away and called the police. The police arrested Charles under another name, Richard Clark. Okay, wait. Nothing happened from him stabbing his friend in the chest? No, we learn that he did this whenever he is finally arrested for the last time. Okay. Uh, But it's just it fits the timeline. So Wow. Yeah, so he isn't isn't even, like, considered a suspect at this time for his friend. Holy shit. Okay, anyways. So, again, July 16th, that happened. And guess what? This was his 52nd birthday so he tried to kidnap this boy on his birthday yeah i mean it's what he wanted that's what, what he, he wished for, for when birthday. he blew the candles he out said, i want an 11 year old boy <laughs> sick <laughs> so sick. this is gonna piss you off these charges were dropped and he was sent to another mental hospital why I don't know. I, I can have only we? I can only guess that he is pleading insanity. So that way the well, there has just to get be that dropped. I am hoping it was for lack of evidence because that too. Yeah, that too. I, I'm like I'm hoping that's what it is because yeah. listen, guys. Sometimes there there are cracks in the system, and I totally get it. And obviously, hindsight is twenty twenty. So, like, looking yeah. back on this guy, we can be like, this is infuriating. But, it, like, if you are being wrongfully convicted, you would want the lack of evidence. So, right. I'm glad that that they take those things into consideration. But for cases right. like this, it, he we shouldn't even be at this point. Like, he shouldn't no. even be out of prison from day one. No, he should 100% be arrested. Like... He should be arrested. He should never have any sort of freedom. He should be behind bars. They should have left him in San Quentin whenever he was there. Yeah. Point Holy blank shit. period. So he goes mm. to this hospital. He's released 49 days later. Um, didn't do anything. <laughs> I know. I know. Didn't do anything for a year. Um, but the following year, again, in St. Joseph, Missouri, he tries to kidnap another boy And that boy got away, thankfully. Uh, Listen, you can barely become sober from drinking alcohol in that amount of time. (laughs) I know. I know. I'm 49 Let alone a Rehabilitated. Yeah, right. I know. Or a kidnapper or an abuser of any sort of time. I know. I know. It's wild. So um, July 1982, a young girl named Michelle, she was 11 years old. Um, she was kidnapped from St. Joseph, Missouri. She was 
She went to her dentist appointment um, at 1030, <sighs> left at 1130, and was walking home. Um, Mom got home around 3 o'clock, noticed that Michelle wasn't there, called the police, um, and a search team was looking for Michelle. Um, they, Uncle, uh, sorry, my thing um, refreshed. Um, Uncle Roy, is that was that the same? I still can't find my place, but I just remember the story. Anyway, I'll find it in a second. Um, Uncle Roy found Michelle's body in between two logs by the river, the same river where four-year-old Eric's body was found. Um, and she was naked and dead. Um, so Aww. the same day, Charles checked himself into that state hospital, um, again, under the name of Richard Clark, and he had stated that he was hearing voices in his head. The state hospital got word of poor Michelle, you know, that she had died um, and that she had been not only raped, but strangled as well. Um, and they put two and two together. They're like, wait a second, this is weird. Like mm, Richard wow. is coming in saying that he's hearing voices in his head. It has to be him. So they contact the police, um, and that's when the police came and arrested him and took him to jail because he was already known as a pedophile and kidnapping, you know, other young boys. So he Yeah, this is his first female victim, right? First female victim. Yep. And I don't know if the symbolism matters, but like the logs and like he worked for the logging company yeah. or the truck driving in between the yeah. logs. I don't know if that was like intentional or just like a convenient spot in the river. Right, but, right. So we're seeing it's some sort yeah. of escalation because now he's oh, yeah. not picking and choosing, like being picky with gender and things like that. He just doesn't care. Yeah, he doesn't care. So he was charged with first degree murder of Michelle. Um, an eyewitness said that they saw Charles by the river. And then, of course, two of the boys that he had attempted to kidnap, uh, kidnap identified him. Um, so when searching his belongings, um, they found sufficient evidence that linked him to the crime, including uh, nylon cords. So he had strangled her with nylon cords and they found it back at where he lived. Um, the shoes, uh, the shoe print matched the shoe print that was by Michelle's body um, in the soil by the river. Um, and his teeth impressions matched the bite mark that was on Michelle's body. Oh, hate that. I hate know. that, hate that, hate that. I know. But, so sad. I mean, considering there's no DNA evidence, mm -hmm. like, that's next best thing. Right, right. <laughs> Um, so while in custody, again, back at the Missouri State Penitentiary, another mental examination was completed and determined that he was competent to stand trial and understand all of the charges that were being charged against him. Well, I'm glad someone had a fucking brain because mm -hmm. seriously, the shit's getting old. Yeah. He did plead uh, not guilty due to mental illness. Of course, of course. Mm -hmm. And you, not like just to go back to your little foreshadowing. Yeah. We're still saying that he only got convicted of two murders. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just want to prepare myself for this scream. That's yeah. going to happen at the end of the story. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's wild. Just wait. So he pleads not guilty. Um, another examination was ordered. However, the judge ordered it with being injected with truth serum. He's like, no, this motherfucker is a liar. We're going to inject him with truth serum, which is a barbiturate, and see if we can actually get the truth out of him and see if he will confess to the murders of, you know, these people as well as others. Um, so whenever he was injected, it did not work against him at all. Um, he stated that he had demons in his head that told him to sacrifice and kill people. So uh, the psychiatrists were like, okay, you clearly are insane, but not insane where you're not competent to stand trial. And they saw right through it. They're like, he's playing us like a fiddle. And again, they determined that he was competent to stand trial, but they did not get a confession out of him. You know what they say? God works hard, but the demons work harder. <laughs> so, <laughs> Right? 
I know. And in his <laughs> like, case, these that's demons what he are really, these demons are on a 24 7 work hour with this guy. Yeah. And that's what they wanted. Like, that's what he wanted. They wanted, he wanted people to believe, you know, that he was like schizophrenic or, you know, multiple personality disorder or whatever. So, Shit. May 3rd, 1983, he wrote a note to one of the prison guards that read, quoted, please call the FBI. Are you all right? Yes. Oh, what what happened? I heard your mic like rattling. Oh, sorry. I was I wiped wine off of my desk. <laughs> I spilled a little bit, so I was just <laughs> wiping it up. You scared me for a second. You're like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, why? Don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. Don't even say that as a joke. Don't even say it as a joke. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Yes, anyway. I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay. It's a, so, uh, May 3rd, nine, Abel, go on. <laughs> May 3rd, <laughs> 1983, he wrote a note to the guard and it said, please call the FBI and tell them I would like to see them today. Very important case. So he met with FBI agent Joe Halstead. Um, he gave Joe a map of where James Churchill's body was. So James was his friend that he stabbed to death, you know, at the river. So he uh, also said that there were a total of 16 bodies and all of the bodies. Everything okay over there? No. (laughs) Hang on. Time out. (laughs) So uh, he gave Joe a map of where James Churchill's body was at. Uh, And again, James was the friend that he stabbed to death at the river because they were drinking all day. And he had the urge to kill him. Um, He also told uh, FBI agent Holstag that there were a total of 16 bodies and all of the bodies were male. Um, The FBI determined that they had put the wrong man behind bars for the four-year-old boy Eric's murder. So at the time when Eric was murdered and his body was found at the river, Basically, St. Joseph, Missouri went through all of the known sex offenders that were in the area. They're like, okay, we want to know where you were at, what was going on, you know, what what did you do that day? Do you know Eric? What's the situation? And they arrested a man who was a known sex offender. They put this man behind bars, um, even though he wasn't the one who did it. They convicted him of the murder of four-year-old boy Eric. So... The FBI determined that they, that they had put the wrong man behind bars, but they needed Charles to state that it was him. And again, he was still going by the name of Richard. So he hadn't given yeah, anyone is... the name of Charles yet. <laughs> so fucking irritating. So irritating. So during an interview, um, he stated that he would trade details about the murders of his victims for the death penalty because he wanted to be executed instead of receiving a life sentence. Oh, of course. I was yeah. like, wait, isn't this guy trying to like avoid all, but okay. No, he death wanted to die. Is opposed to life. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sent- yeah. yeah. Okay, good. So he also finally at this time stated his real name to FBI agent Halstead so he said, my name is Charles Ray Hatcher. I'm not Richard. I'm not Albert. Um, I hope they but, felt real fucking dumb. Oh, I hope so, too, because he had over 15 aliases, like over 15. And we went over, what, like three of them? And yes. he had six different social security cards. Oh, Jesus Christ. Rice. Yeah. So we know, you know, <laughs> Richard Price, Richard Clark, Richard Lee Grady, but he had others. Um, Albert Price, he had Albert Ayer, he had Doris Mullins, Richard uh, Lee, he had Ronald Springer. I mean, there were so many different names that were just like all over the place, literally all over the place. Yikes. <laughs> So, in July, two months later, FBI agent Holstag received a detailed letter from Charles about the murder of four-year-old Eric. Um, So, he documented literally everything that he did to him, the body placement and all of that. Um, And so, in October, uh, he was sentenced to life in prison for the murder of Eric. And the man who was currently serving time was obviously released. 
Um, which, okay. <laughs> like, I know. This is also a known pedophile, so it's like, oh. Yeah, I know. But I know. At least we've got this guy signed, yeah. sealed, and delivered. Yeah, right. I know. It's like, oh, well, maybe you should have just left it behind. It's like first, the but... lesser of two evils. Right. And they do not deserve to be free. I'm sorry. No. Like, they don't. Um, no, so they September do not. September the following year, Charles was convicted of capital murder of the 11 year old girl, Michelle, uh, where he was sentenced to life in prison. So he did not get the death penalty. Good. Uh, life in prison, in prison without the possibility of parole. Um, FBI agent Halstag met with Charles in November um, of that year, so of 1984, for the last time. And then on December 7th, 1984, Charles hung himself in his cell with a piece of electrical wire. Um, he also tied his hands behind his back with shoelaces so that way he could not stop himself from dying. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. So I think and what this happened. Guy, let's also keep in mind he didn't know how to properly cut his wrists. Right. But he knew how to properly hang himself, like, right. to an extreme. Okay. So it was, yeah, it was all an act before until, you know, the yeah. final thing. So what happened was he was sentenced, you know, to life in prison, and that's not what he wanted. He wanted the death penalty. So he's like, mm -hmm. okay, well, I'm going to kill myself. Um, yeah. His remains were buried at the prison cemetery because his family didn't want him. Uh, so he no. was buried at the Missouri State Penitentiary uh, Prison Cemetery. And uh, he confessed to 16 murders, but again, was only convicted of two. Michelle, what? the 11-year-old girl, and Eric, the 4-year-old boy. So. What the f actual fuck? Like, yeah. Yeah. I... I don't under, I mean, he's dead and gone, so justice served, but like right. not. <laughs> right, right. Uh, I, man, and I get it, like people confess to more than what, than they're worth. There's like narcissist serial yeah. killers and all of that, yeah. but it's like he, he recounted like the experience and like who it was, where it took place, how right. it happened. And he documented literally everything for that FBI agent. And it's like, okay, he confessed, confessed to the murders in California, confessed to the murders, you know, in Iowa and Illinois, wherever he was at. I mean, there were times where it would go a year at a time and nothing would happen. So it's like, you know, that something happened or he killed somebody, but you know, clearly it just, it wasn't something that was documented. Again, he said yeah. he murdered 16 people, but was only convicted of two. 16 people. Yeah. That's over a course of what was the total year count? Um, Cause so it was like decades, right? 20 years, about 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. And how he just getting to bounce from, Mental facility to mental facility and just getting off of literally any and all sentencing. And he knew he played the game. He was like, I'm going to state that I'm mentally insane. You know, that way I don't have to go to prison and they'll let me out for good behavior. And then I'll and go they did. And whatever. And they did. And he was a terrible criminal because, you know, we hear like Golden State Killer. He killed so many people and he's like free for what 40 years 50 yeah years before he gets caught you know what i mean and then you have this guy he fucking gets released and two days later he, he's getting caught and getting arrested again and going back to the state hospital so it's like but they kept letting him out they kept letting him yeah out, which is just it's insane. a good thing it's a good insane. thing this guy wasn't as smart as like the golden state killer right because he never would have been caught yeah, like never. Golden State Killer basically right. got lazy. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, DNA testing and all that. But it's yeah. like, he, right. th this guy just wasn't s smart about it, thankfully. No, at Otherwise, all. Otherwise, even if he would have fucked up along the way, it just would have, you know, re released at least until DNA testing. And then I feel like that would have changed. And he was pretty close to that mark. Right. Um, but that's just 
baffling and take DNA out of it. I yeah. feel like there are so many opportunities to keep him mm-hmm. locked up, to keep him locked <laughs> up. And they should have known from the first time that he got arrested under yeah. a false name, this guy mm-hmm. might have multiple false names. And it wasn't until the end. And he had to admit, yeah, I have yeah. 15 aliases, 15 aliases, not one, That's... not two, not three, fucking 15 and six and, social security cards. Yes. And that's just it. And it's not just like, oh, I get arrested. So I'm going to give you a fake name. It's like, he's been, he's packing yeah, right, proof. He's packing right, proof. Right. So. Makes no sense. Wild. Hey. Yeah. I mean, he, he ended his life in 1984 and I hate to say it, but we're better off without people Yeah. Like thank God. That. Because no telling what would have happened. I would hate yeah. for like more shit to come out and be like, right. well, this was a mistrial or this was a false accusation. Because right. this, this guy got lucky. Oh, he did. He got lucky. So. Yeah. Every yeah, time. Good, good riddance, honestly. I know. I know. But, so that is the uh, Missouri uh, native Charles Ray Hatcher, a.k.a. Well, the wannabe Jesse James. <laughs> yeah. Ew, gross. We're not using that title. Cut that. Crazy, um, crazy Charlie. <laughs> yes, Crazy Charlie. I have to say, I thought the name sounded familiar, but I don't think I've ever heard that one. I hadn't heard this story until I looked up, you know, cancer serial killers. Then I saw mm-hmm. Missouri. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've got to do this. Got to do it. Oh, yeah. And I loved, like, all the crazy, like, mental illness stuff behind it, even though, uh, you know, like, yeah. he clearly wasn't mentally ill where he said that he was. We know he had problems of some sort. He's a narcissist. Yeah. He's a sociopath. Like, but he's not where he thought that he was. It just blows my mind. And maybe we should do a short sinister story over this. Like what actually happens when you plead yeah. mentally unstable or mentally unfit to stand trial or whatever the terminology is. Yeah. Because that is such a misconception. And I yeah. don't know exactly how it's changed and evolved over the years, but right. it does not mean like what people think. It does not mean no. you get to go to like a retreat no. or that you get. Uh, but I mean, for this guy, it did. For this yeah. guy. It worked it for this guy. Yeah. yeah. It worked and for him, but that's yeah. not actually how it works. So, like, maybe not we should at all. cover that. We definitely should. That would be I great. think that's a good idea. Yeah. But, uh, wow, great story. And Thanks. We always say fuck California, but, you know. Fuck California fuck and the water. Well, yeah, both. Yeah. <laughs> and the 1970s. The 1970s shit, should have just man. been flushed down the toilet. Yeah, that was wild, wild, wild time. Yep. So, so. well, guys, um, so quick reminder. I'm going to yes. try to remember all the details, but if. <laughs> You guys are wanting to start a podcast. Um, a few people have reached out along the way. Uh, yes. You can do it as a hobby. You can do it as a profession. You know, whatever yep. your goals as a podcast are. Um, yep. We use the podcast host Buzzsprout. And we do. I have used other platforms in the past. Buzzsprout is by far the easiest and the best. You yep. can start at basic and go all the way up to like a premium level. Uh you can monetize your podcast from Buzzsprout. You can yep. edit your podcast. I mean, just the whole thing Literally is Literally so, everything. Yeah. I mean, they, they cover it all. You upload it. They send it out. You don't have to worry about Apple and Spotify and all that crap. So if you guys are wanting to start your own podcast and try it out, yeah. let us know. We have an affiliate link that you can use. And just for signing up, you guys get a $25 Amazon gift card to put towards right. you know, equipment or... Whatever. Whatever you groceries. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ring lights. <laughs> so if you want that information, let us know. If you're watching on YouTube, it's gonna be in the description. Yep. Yep. And that's Absolutely. all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, and I just want to say for the local listeners, if you know of a business that's interested in hosting the trivia night with us, Sinister Sisters, and uh send them our Send them our way. Send us, uh, you know, their information, you know, whether it's on social media or our email. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was going <laughs> to. Sorry. 
<laughs> what? Quick story. Quick story. So oh my gosh. speaking of my former podcast, my former yeah. podcast was called Shit the Audience Says. And yes. I'm an entertainer. So like I told all these crazy things audience members said to me. I right. got one the other day. Oh, this gosh. lady came up to me after my show. And I just thought of it because I raised my eyebrows. She was like, you're so pretty and talented and whatever. All the compliments, blah, blah, blah. doesn't matter. She goes, but she's like, you shouldn't raise your eyebrows so much because it's going to cause wrinkles. You're like, <gasps> yeah, bitch. I know. I need Botox. I said, that's what Botox is for. Clearly it's ran out. So if you guys want to send me a couple hundred bucks so I can keep up with my fucking wrinkles, go for it. But I was like, yeah. It's fine. Like, I'm not. Dr- okay. Thanks. <laughs> I'm not drowning in debt right now. Like, oh my clearly God. the Botox has ran off, bitch. Anyway, right. so. How rude. All the- <laughs> you should have so. been like, well, do you have $200 for me to not have wrinkles? Yeah. And to not exactly. move my eyebrows? Yeah. And also for the emotional trauma you're going to cause, this is going to take right. at least one therapy session. So. Right. Right. That with that being said, our PayPal is linked in our bio. So if you, <laughs> if you want, want to send buy us, us money, like ten units of Botox, you're more than welcome. It's about a hundred bucks. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. But also, guys, we are going to the podcast movement in Dallas in August. It is really fucking expensive and yeah. if you don't want to do like monthly subscription through paypal you know sending 10 20 bucks to our yeah. paypal or through patreon yeah sending 10 20 dollars through paypal will be super helpful to us it will fully go to towards the podcast movement and not yep. botox so yes. for sure uh, you can for do sure. that as well yeah but that's absolutely. it absolutely that's, that's all we got cancer oh, this is your season y'all are fucking nuts and i can't wait to talk about you more Oh, for sure. For sure. Awesome. All right, guys. You guys know what to do. Stay sinister. Bye.